Please do not fall victim to the scammers in the comments section or on other social media platforms. I will never reach out to you for a personal reading. To reach me directly for a personal reading or for a collaboration, you can email me at CelticFairyTarot90 at gmail.com. Hello everyone, Celtic Fairy Tarot back with another pick a card reading and today we are going to be getting a message from your ancestors. What do your ancestors want you to know? We have pile one. We have pile two. We have pile three. All right, take your time. Vibe out which pile is calling to you and the timestamps are down below. Can't wait to get into it. Hello, pile one. You have chosen photo number one. And before we get into your oracle card, I just want to let you know a little bit about the symbolism of the library. The libraries can symbolize wisdom, hidden knowledge, and a call to the past, as libraries tend to hold quite a bit of past cultural history. I also want to talk about the light bulbs because the light bulbs were also prominent in this photo and light bulbs can symbolize a sudden insight or even just thought in general. Okay, so you guys could be learning quite a bit, intaking quite a bit, or, you know, binge watching documentaries or things like that. Um, and that is what your ancestors want to acknowledge with photo number one. Now, you have the Oracle card, Too Many Hats. And the Too Many Hats card talks about wearing too many hats or trying to do too many different things at the same time. And I'm drawn to the fact that, I don't know, the hats to me are symbolizing maybe different things you're trying to learn. They're symbolizing the crown chakra for me personally. I feel like you could be trying to intake or trying to learn quite a bit and you may be you know doing many different things at the same time like when we go to school we learn science history math and literature all at the same time i feel like there is something or multiple things that you're trying to learn and maybe you're concerned that it's not intaking or you're like you know i spend hours a day um researching this or investigating this and it's still not sticking and what your ancestors want to remind you of is the need for one at a time and maybe incorporating some green noise into your um study process could be helpful as well like listening to green noise as you're watching these documentaries or listening to green noise as you're studying whatever it is you're studying and making sure that you're doing one thing at a time so if you're out there and you're trying to study you know abnormal psychology and reiki at the same time that is going to be a complicated path it doesn't mean that you can't do it it just means it's it's difficult <laughs> to intake all of that into your subconscious at the same time and so what your ancestors are saying is they're saying slow down one at a time and incorporate something to help your um, subconscious retain this information like white noise or green noise or brown noise or something like that in my experience green noise works the best but to each his own and whatever you feel is helping your subconscious retain that information the best okay let's pull some more cards here Ooh, 
Look, nine of cups. Yeah, I think your ancestors just really don't want you to get discouraged about whatever you're learning or whatever you're trying to do because you have the capability to learn it and you have the capability to master it. But I think there needs to be a little bit of tweaking with how you are incorporating this learning into your life. So you could be trying to study when you're stressed out you could be trying to study, you know, with kids screaming in the background. Whatever it is, it just feels like there's distractions and your subconscious is having a difficult time retaining that information. It's not that your mind can't retain that information or it's not that you are, um, you know, a difficult learner or you're having, you know, problems with that. It just feels like your environment needs a little bit of tweaking in order to give you the full effect of intaking this information. Let's see. Yeah, <laughs> they're showing me you could have a very intelligent mind and a mind you could be an air sign as well. Um, I'm just going to change my position on the chair. Um, but you could be an air sign as well, because I'm seeing someone try to study and they're reading a book and then all of a sudden their mind trails off and they're like, mm, you know, what would be really good right now. Dell's lemonade <laughs> or, you know, it would be really good right now. A bagel <laughs> or, um, you know, a random memory creeps in or your brain is just very distracted right now, I think is what I'm trying to bring in. Your mind is just not focused and incorporating more things in your life while trying to learn these things to help you focus is going to be really beneficial. And again, just one at a time, one thing at a time. And that doesn't mean you have to listen to your ancestors. You can continue to take on multiple projects at the same time. Just focus on the focus, okay? Focus on the green noise. Focus on quieting the environment. Focus on having a distraction-free place to, to work through this healing. I mean, to work through this learning. Maybe some of you are healing as well, but I really feel like this is more learning something or investigating something, right? Okay, ancestors of pile one. What does pile one need to know right now, please? We have the hanged man. What does pile one need to know right now, please? We have the Seven of Wands. And please clarify the Seven of Wands. We have the Queen of Swords. Okay. So I don't feel like the word healing slipping out there was an accident. We also have the Nine of Pentacles on the back of the deck. Okay. So I feel like... Uh, the green noise would be beneficial for you because there's a lot of cycling thoughts. What I was picking up on earlier in the reading where you're trying to intake or you're trying to study and read and all of a sudden, you know, this memory creeps in or this um, need creeps in or this creeps in. And it just feels like your mind with the Queen of Swords here could need a little bit of that meditation time. And by meditation time, I don't mean sit down and talk to your guides and, you know, traverse the, the multiverse. I do not mean that type of meditation. The meditation I'm referring to is calm and grounding and very nature involved. This could be sitting outside. This could be, you know, even just sitting, um, let's see, even just sitting with a rock that you found out in nature and just feeling it and, you know, running your fingers over it and allowing that green noise in the background 
to quiet the mind. There's a need to quiet the mind because I feel like your mind could be a bit overactive and it could be overactive because you're doing healing work. There's a lot that's surfacing. There's a lot of different stagnant energies getting ready to purge at the same time as you are doing this up leveling. So, you know, too many hats. <laughs> it's not that you are incapable and it's not that you're broken. It just means that you're juggling a lot right now. And if you want to continue to do it, you know, all the power to you. Your ancestors aren't saying, stop this. They're just saying, this is what the reality is. The reality is, is there's so much happening that it's hard for you to focus. And finding that that focus is important if you want to be able to accomplish this because I feel like you could watch a documentary and then by the end of the documentary you're like I have no idea what I just watched because throughout the documentary you went to this place mentally and that place mentally and this place mentally or you know if you're studying something in class the entire class goes by and you're like wait a minute I didn't retain anything because I was sitting here having a conversation with you know someone I got into a fight with 10 years ago and it's like this working through healing process at the same time as learning. And, you know, it's possible to do both of these things. It's possible to grow and heal at the same time, but both require a tremendous amount of focus. So when you're focused on your healing, stay focused on that healing. When you're focused on your growth and your learning and your intaking, stay focused on that. Um, you know, maybe even setting a schedule and saying, you know, Mondays is for healing, Tuesdays is for growing, Wednesdays is for healing, Thursday is for growing, and <laughs> you know, Friday is for rest, Saturday is for rest, um, or just in enjoying life, right? M making a schedule could be really beneficial too. But it just feels like with the, the Seven of Wands here and the Queen of Swords, it feels like there needs to be a little bit of defense when it comes to the cycling thoughts, when it comes to just how you know, because of your intelligence, there are so many different aspects of life that you're looking at at one time. Like, I, I feel like you're never truly resting, pile one. There are so many tabs open always. And taking a moment to close out all the tabs, kind of like when you refresh your phone. When you refresh your phone, it feels good, right? <laughs> when you hit the X and you get rid of all the notifications and it feels like your phone is just quiet for a moment, that is what your brain is requiring right now. That is what your ancestors are seeing. And with the Nine of Pentacles, you know, you are skilled you are talented you are somebody who can accomplish this you can accomplish this massive healing that you're doing and this learning that you're doing there just needs to be again a little bit of recalibration in where how you're focusing how you're intaking this information Let's pull you some handwritten messages now. We have, I wish I could show you how not alone you are. I wish you could see your support system here in the spirit world. I wish I could show you yourself from our point of view. I wish you knew just how loved and sacred your soul is. Beautiful energy beautiful energy. We have root chakra located at the base of the spine where the thighs begin. The mantra is I am associated with red and brown and the lom sound helps you connect to the chakra associated with survival, trust and grounding. Beautiful. And I feel like grounding again, even with the nine of pentacles, we can see these giant roots from the tree. Grounding is so important. Um, quieting the mind is so important in order to intake that information to grow, but also in order to release, to really focus on what it is you're releasing. Because I feel like even if you are practicing clearing spells or you are working through your healing. I feel like you could be doing an inner child meditation, but still at the same time, you're processing an old profound trauma or you are, you know, thinking about what you have to make for dinner that night. I feel like there's there's not a, a like a laser beam focus and that is going to help you.
You are about to embark on a new adventure, and the only thing you need to know is that you have everything you need to find your way within you. You are ready to explore this new timeline. Don't let it intimidate you. You have what it takes. Beautiful. All right, and we're gonna pull just one more. We have gray aura. Gray auras indicate neutrality, balance, and the in-between. People with gray auras tend to be good arbitrators with their ability to maintain a balanced point of view on situations and events. They are often observant, diplomatic, and practical. These traits make them good problem solvers. Yeah, this is my Libra pile. <laughs> I really feel like this is my pile of Libras, or this is my pile of people who have Libra dominant in their, in their chart. I don't know. I just feel that. This card, the man on this card, is also reminding me of Odin because Odin is fierce, but he is also gentle, and he is also goofy, and he is also um, very big-hearted for the human collective, for um, people who are suffering. And I think that whatever it is you're trying to learn, this could be learning to be a lawyer. This could be going to you know law school. This could be... Um, learning how to be a healer, but it feels like whatever it is you're trying to learn, some of you could be trying to learn palm reading as well with the hand in the back. Um, let's see. Some of you could be making things. Like, I don't know why I saw the Mad Hatter with all the hats, uh, making hats. So some of you could be making clothing um, and you wanna learn how to make clothing. Uh, maybe it's sustainable clothing. I don't know, but it just feels like there's so much pure heartedness with your intention of learning whatever this is. Like, it's not like you're trying to learn how to play poker or you're trying to learn how to, you know, um, paint Lamborghinis, <laughs> whatever it is. It just feels like you're learning something that can really help yourself and the collective around you, the world around you. It's not small, whatever it is you're trying to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Some of you could be trying to familiarize with politics, familiarize yourself with politics so that you know more about what's going on in the world so you can help more about what's going on in the world. Some of you, again, could be studying law. Some of you could be studying different divination tactics in order to help the collective and yourself. Some of you could be studying different healing techniques, um, witchcraft, whatever it is, lean into the focus. Okay, play some of that, you know, green noise and watch your mind quiet and watch how much that impacts how you retain what you're you're intaking. Okay. All right, pile one. I'm going to leave that here. I wish you the best of luck on your journey and until next time. Bye. Hello, pile two. You have chosen photo number two. And before we get into your oracle card here, I want to dive into the symbolism of the doorknob for you. The symbolism of the doorknob is opportunity and transition. The doorknob represents a way to open or close a door, giving us the power to make the decision to open or close that door. Um, you know, instead of just waiting for the door to prop itself open, there is a a doorknob that we can go and we can open. And your oracle card here is ducks in a row. And the ducks in a row card talks about a chaotic environment that requires your control and for you to control what you can control to bring order to that chaotic environment. And when I pulled this card, it was interesting because I had already pulled the picture for pile three of the duck. So if you were drawn to pile three, there could be a message there for you. If you were not drawn to pile three, um, that is not a sign to go watch it. I just thought it was interesting that the duck came up for pile two as well. Um, and, you know, when I pulled this card, I really felt like autopilot, like someone is just being pulled by the current or just kind of allowing life to happen to them. This is a very fate-based energy rather than a destiny-based energy, and that's okay. And sometimes this energy is encouraged. Sometimes we have to surrender control in order to you know, transition in order to ascend, in order to heal, in order to grow. Sometimes we have to release that control. But this feels like 
a decade. This feels like years of just kind of allowing life to take you where you go. And I don't think that you're in a space. We can see this woman's face here. I feel like there's stress and there's anxiety and there's numbness and there's depression. And I feel like it would be different if the current was taking you along somewhere that was for your highest good. But I feel like for years, you have kind of allowed the current to bring you into the dark forest and out and then back in and then out and then back in. It's kind of like, instead of grabbing life by the horns, there's this energy of allowing, you know, maybe defeat to overtake you or allowing you know, the bullies at a job to make you quit. There's just something about needing to take your power back, needing to take back control of the the chaotic environment you may have found yourself in. Like this is something I used to waitress. And anytime anybody who is a waitress or a waiter knows this, it can be brutal when it comes to hazing or bullying or things like that. It's just brutal. And I'm seeing someone at work and, you know, the other servers are bullying them and they just quit their job, which is exactly what the other servers wanted them to do because they wanted their tables, they wanted this, or there was a benefit in some way of getting you to quit your job. And I think that sometimes you can just fall into that rather than standing your ground and saying, you know what, I belong here too. I belong here too, and I'm making money to feed my family and keep a roof over my head, and you and your laughing or your hurtful words are not gonna stop me from doing that. There's like an, uh, a need to take back your power or take back what you can control in your life. You know, we know we can't control everything. We cannot control every aspect of our life. And if we try to, it would drive us crazy. But it's important to control what we can control when we feel like it's for our highest good. Okay, let's see if we can get more information here. Yeah, a lot of times when I was serving, I was bullied because I worked hard and the servers didn't want to have to or um, because, you know, there was gossip or politics or, you know, one waitress was dating the cook and the cook said thank you the wrong way to me, <laughs> you know. So um, there could be a different reason for everybody for why you're facing the struggles that you're facing or why you're facing the people that you're facing. But it's important to stand your ground pile two. That's what your, your ancestors are saying. Stand your ground. Yeah, I'm seeing a visual of them like opening a gate for you and presenting it to you and saying you have the right to walk through it. You have the right to be here. You have the right to, to work here. You have the right to learn here. You have the right to walk here. Yeah, there's just a lot of energy of like Mm. not not rolling with the with the current so much anymore and trying you know to find that destiny trying to stand your ground yeah if you know what you're worth go out and get what you're worth i just heard that let's see ancestors of pile two what does pile two need to hear right now please Thank you. Okay, we have the lovers. We have the queen of swords. Okay, so for some of you, this autopilot could be here because of a toxic romantic connection. Um, with the lovers, it doesn't even have to necessarily be romantic, though. It could be a toxic family relationship, a toxic friendship, but it just kind of feels like you lost yourself mentally for a little while. And this lack of control or this rolling with the current isn't because, you know, you're lazy and it isn't because you're weak. It's because you're tired. You're just tired. Like I'm seeing someone who was swimming really powerfully just stop swimming and let the current take them and you know fair enough pile two 
Fair enough. We have the Wheel of Fortune. And we have Temperance. Yeah. I think that that's a cycle you're shifting out of. This is like recovering from narcissistic abuse. This is recovering from an abusive relationship or an abusive childhood. Yeah, I'm hearing it's it's not that you don't have the fight in you. It's just that you don't want to fight. You're tired. There's like a, a lack of a will to push, a lack of a will to assert your narrative. We have the King of Cups on the back of the deck. Yeah, I feel like you have been, you have come across quite a bit of toxic masculine energy. And when we talk about toxic masculine energy, it's really tyrannical and it's really oppressive. And so, you know, healthy masculine energy, like the King of Cups here, is very supportive and very encouraging and very providing. But when we talk about the toxic aspects of masculinity and we talk about you know the tyrant energy and the oppressive energy it really teaches us to not trust our own instinct or not trust our own wants and our own needs because they are not the wants and needs of the tyrant that is telling us how to live our life and so coming back into alignment with self is a journey and it's a self-love journey it's a a journey that requires patience with the temperance card because you're getting to know yourself again. You're getting to relearn yourself again. And I feel like if you are that person that's being bullied at work and it's making you quit your job or you know, you're being deterred from growing your own life out of fear of judgment from others or fear of the energy of others, this is because you were taught to submit. This is because you were taught that your perspective and your life doesn't matter like this person who wants you to quit your job so that they can have more tables and they can have more money wants to take their money go out and drink with it and you want to be at that job to make that money to keep food in your children's mouth so it's it's important to be able to separate what somebody else wants from you and needs from you and whether or not you're prepared to give that okay and you are in control of whether or not you are prepared to give that all right, let's pull you some handwritten messages now. We have 555. 555. Five, five. There is going to be a surprise or a significant change in the direction of your life. Have an open mind during this transition. You are being highly encouraged to break free from any addictions or chains that may be restricting you. You are going to be okay. Choose the path of freedom. Beautiful. We have 1010. Everything is working out for your highest good. You have awoken to your spiritual self. You are ready to take action. Commit yourself to your soul's desires. You are fully supported by the universe. Yeah, I feel like people have just been able to discourage you. I don't know. And even if you're not working to keep food in your children's mouth and you don't have any children, your money is going towards, you know, um, blankets and the electric bill and you know taking care of yourself and providing for yourself and i feel like these other people who could come in and bully you or could come in and you know cause you to quit your job these people you know they don't know what they're doing with their life they don't know where they're going with their life the highlight of their life is they get to go into work and bully other people to feel better about themselves and i think that there's a different perspective that needs to be had on people like this rather than maybe they're right and maybe i'm broken there needs to be a different perspective of self-defense you know instead of in your mind falling into how other people perceive you or falling into what other people think you should be doing. It's important to see your life from a higher perspective and be defending you as if you would defend another. Mm. One more, please. We have a journal prompt. What makes you feel present and in the moment? How can you begin to incorporate that into your daily life? Beautiful. And this could be an exercise that helps you, again, if you're struggling with other people, if you're struggling with going out into the world, how can you incorporate self-love out in the world like that? I know when I used to waitress, I'd have a fidget spinner or I'd have, you know, a very particular spinny ring or I used to 
you know, tape the pictures of my children in my little black book so that it would help remind me of why I was there. And so doing little things like that could be helpful on your path to remind you that maybe you're not the problem, right? Maybe you have the right to take up space and maybe you have the right to do what you want to do this lifetime, just like every other tyrant thinks they have the right, right? <laughs> All right, pile two, I'm going to leave that here. I wish you the best of luck on your journey and until next time, bye. Hello, pile three. You have chosen photo number three. And before we get into your oracle card here, I want to dive into the symbolism of the duck a little bit. And in Celtic stories, duck symbolizes new beginning and transition. And, you know, when we look at ducks, it appears that they're working effortlessly. However, under the water, you can see their constant and powerful paddling. And I feel like you, pile three, with the commune with nature card, could really be feeling as though you're not doing enough or feeling as though you're not accomplishing enough. You could be that person that is in your 30s and you're like, you know, I don't own a house already. I'm a failure. Or you could be that person that's in your 40s and you've like, I've never driven a car before or been able to hold a job. So I'm a failure. And what your ancestors want to talk about is what you're doing that you don't see. Um, and a lot of times, you know, even when I talk about witchcraft or mediumship, <clears throat> a lot of witches or mediums will say, you know, I didn't even know that was a thing that made you a witch. I didn't even know that was a thing that made you a medium. And so with you, I feel like there's so much happening energetically, shifting, there's so much transmuting, and there's so much energy work happening that it's difficult for you to maintain that balance in the body. And so for you, that could look like a failure. And, you know, when you reach your life review, you could be afraid and you could be like, you know, I didn't do anything this lifetime. I didn't do anything with myself. I never faced that fear. And your spirit team or your ancestors will be there to remind you how much energetic work you've done, how much, you know, transmuting of past lives you've done, how much transmuting of, you know, ancestral generational karma you've done. You know, sometimes the most power powerful thing you can do this lifetime is put down the drink or put down the addiction or put down, you know, the egocentric way of being. There's just, you know, not fully because our egos are a beautiful thing. We should never completely kill them off. Um, but, you know, how do I say this? Sometimes the most profound things we come here to do in this lifetime, society doesn't look at that as a profound thing, but that doesn't make it any less profound. I hope I'm bringing this in correctly. Let's get more, let's get more cards here. Yeah, they're saying like you are the duck. It looks like from the top of the water that you're just floating and you're doing nothing, but under the water, you're paddling really powerfully. And this is your energetic being. Maybe what you're doing in your dream life, maybe what you're doing with your healing and shifting, maybe what you're doing with your past life regressions. There's just so much you're accomplishing that you don't count as accomplishments. And that could be what's making you feel like you haven't accomplished anything. Maybe you haven't been able to buy a house, but you have shifted the tides of ancestral healing, you know, different things like that. Or, you know, you haven't been able to drive a car or keep a job, but you've managed to awaken, you know, um, the divination that was long buried in your bloodline. Or you've managed to come back to, you know, source where your ancestors were at that point. There's just an energy of doing more than you understand that you're doing. <laughs> and that when you reach your life review, they're saying, don't worry, you'll be happy with yourself. You'll be very, very happy with yourself. Ancestors of Pile 3. What does Pile 3 need to know right now, please? Thank you. Yeah, look, we have the King of Wands. And the King of Wands is a natural born leader. They're like, the leadership in you is the reason why you can't hold a job. You don't want to work for somebody else. <laughs> it's not because you're incapable. Stop telling yourself you're incapable. It's because you don't want to. <laughs> it's that simple. You don't want to. It's not that you're not capable of doing it. You want to trailblaze. You want to create your own life. You want to live a life of your dreams and you don't want to fall into, you know, the same narrative that everybody else is in. Ancestors of Pile 3, 
What does pile three need to hear right now, please? Ooh, thank you. We have the four of cups. We have the emperor. Listen, the emperor and the king of wands. <laughs> yeah, this is not a question of your capability. This is a question of I don't want to. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> we have the page of cups. And we have the devil. Yeah, I just feel like you're breaking so many generational ties and um, cycles. I feel like you are energetically completely helping the people around you transmute, whether you realize you're doing it or not. There's a reason you feel fatigued all the time. Ask yourself, Pile 3, do I feel fatigued all the time? And if your answer is yes, there is absolutely a reason for it. I can tell you with the utmost certainty that you do not feel fatigued without a reason. <laughs> there is a reason that you feel fatigued. Try to get to the root of that reason. Is it your environment? Is it the people around you? Is it a mindset? Is it conditioning? Whatever it is. Really work towards freeing yourself from this idea that you're incapable and, and that you haven't accomplished anything this lifetime and understand that there are different ways to accomplish things, even if you can't fully comprehend them or understand them. Yeah, they're saying your soul understands. Your mind not be able to understand or compartmentalize how much energetic work you're doing this lifetime. I feel like a lot of you are going through past lives. I feel like a lot of you are healing generational traumas. And that is enough, okay? You don't have to be out here buying a mansion and, and owning fancy things and, you know, having a societal status in order to make it in life. Sometimes, again, just shifting the dynamic of the bloodline is a massive, massive purpose. Sometimes just existing in the grass and watching the water and, you know, allowing your mind to creatively explore that is a massive purpose. So it's important to, to kind of analyze and observe what you feel about purpose and why you feel you have none. Okay, that is an important thing to go over. That's what your ancestors want you to, to look at. Let's get you some handwritten messages. They're saying like everyone that comes into contact with you, um, you light up their inner child, you inspire them, you encourage them, you make them feel safe. Why is that not enough? That's what they're saying here. Why is that not enough? With the devil here, I feel like the devil is just this, you know, um, this, this standard, this what you have to live up to. And it's always in the back of your mind. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. And maybe even um, with this four of cups here, you look back and you're like, you know, if I had my shit together, maybe that would have went differently. Or if I had a house, maybe I wouldn't feel so unsafe and things like that. And, you know, the world is a wonky thing. The human existence is a wonky thing. And we can say to ourselves, I wish I could have done this differently, or I wish I could have lived this differently, or I wish I could have known better back then. But sometimes it's it's helpful to, to fall because then we learn where we fell and how to not fall again, okay? Looking at mistakes not as a complete failure or a complete waste of your life existence. Seeing mistakes as an opportunity to learn, an opportunity to grow. You are the leader, pile three. Yeah, I just heard the Lost Boys from Peter Pan. I'm following the leader, the leader. <laughs> Wherever you may go. Oh, the dog has come in to join us as well. <laughs> Yeah, I just feel like you inspire people. You make people feel safe. You make people feel heard and seen. You're creative. You inspire other people to be creative. You inspire other people to follow their dreams, to take control of their own life. Listen, you have so many beautiful, beautiful qualities about you. You have so many purposes that you've already accomplished that maybe, again, you just don't view as accomplishments. 
Yeah, look, we have just because those around you cannot or will not understand your truth does not always mean that you have not found clarity. It doesn't mean that you don't know what you're talking about. At one point, scientists and astrologers were accused of witchcraft and insanity. And I feel that. I feel like just because people can't understand what you're doing doesn't mean you're lazy. Just because people can't understand um, you know, past life regression and how you can transmute that energy. Um, just because people don't understand things like that does not mean that you're not accomplishing something. Okay. All right, we have dreaming of an ex or old friend does not necessarily mean that person could or should come back. Dreaming of an old ex or friend encourages you to reflect on why this person is no longer in your life. Did you have a negative or positive experience with this person? You may be dreaming of this person because you see some of their behavior in your own as well. All right. So that is a message here, I think, separate from the rest of the messages. So that could be just for a few of you. We have rainbow aura. Rainbow auras are extremely rare and symbolize an evolved soul that encompasses all of the other aura colors. People who have rainbow auras have a deep understanding of human nature and the world as a whole. Yeah, I feel like that is work, right? Imagine having to analyze every person you come across subconsciously and you don't even realize you're doing it. Imagine Imagine scanning a friend over when they're sad or when they're angry and having the ability to help them transmute that, but all of that is invisible. You cannot see it. Your friend feels better, but you know, it, it's hard to explain the energetic being on this planet when we don't talk about it enough, when we don't research it enough. And so just because it would appear that you haven't leveled up in life doesn't mean that you haven't leveled up immensely because you have <laughs> pile three you have okay all right i'm gonna leave that here i wish you the best of luck on your journey and until next time